Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, and we're going to make a drawstring pouch. This is a great project, super easy, very little skill required, and in fact, we're going to hand sew these. We don't need a machine. Now, a couple of big points. We're going to use suede. First off, because we have such gorgeous colors in suede. Is that not beautiful? And we could do all kinds of contrast with those colors. But secondly, suede, a little bit less expensive, very affordable for us. Now on the size, we're going with a six by six, but let's don't limit ourselves to that. Think of a pouch for a pool cue or flute, drumsticks, or a small medicine pouch. All kinds of ways we can go with this on size alone. But we'll also talk about a number of ways where we can fine tune these down to very unique projects. All right. Anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to the website. So let's step over here and get started. Super easy pattern here. In fact, we're just doing a six by six. Make it your own, any size you want. One big point though, we need to go with a softer leather. Four to five ounces, not bad as long as it's supple. Three to four ounces, almost perfect. We're going to go with a suede. Now with our pattern, let's take a quick peek at that because simple, absolutely. We're gonna keep it simple. Six by six, but you'll notice across my whole spacing, the math doesn't add up. That's okay. What we're going to do is we're simply going to drop in four holes across the top for our lacing. If they're off a little bit, does not matter because when we cinch this, we'll never see that. So with that, we've got our main body, six by six. Then we've got our flat piece. And we're going to cut this just off the edge so we can get that natural tear look. All right, let's step over, cut some leather. The hardest part here is going to be picking our color combinations because we've got 21 beautiful colors of suede. You can go with one color and it's going to be gorgeous. But let's go with this contrast. This is a very rustic look. We've got a rich rust for our flap and a chocolate brown for our body. But let's reverse that, see how that looks. Now with our pattern. This is simply our plastic sheeting, and I love this. It makes a great pattern, but we're going to take that a step further. This is simply paneling, home paneling, and we can find smaller cuts of this at the hardware store. Two good points here. First off, I can cut this with my box knife. It's going to take about a dozen or more cuts, but I don't have to break out the tools. Secondly, when I go to cut, I can lay that down, hold it, and simply cut straight from the pattern makes the whole process very easy. So let's start right here. Let's pull our suede rust out. Look at that, that's beautiful and clean. Let's drop in. You know what? We're gonna try to get a torn edge or a natural edge. So let's bring this over to about right here and let's cut this piece out. How easy is that? And look at that, clean and consistent, okay? We need two, so let's cut out one more. Good, there we go. Now let's jump over to our brown. Good chocolate brown. Now with this, again, we're gonna try to find a natural edge or a torn edge. So let's open this up. That looks good, actually all the way across. So really what I'm gonna do here so I'm just going to go to about half of my pouch depth or pattern depth. You can go much deeper or much more shallow, but about right there. So let's cut that right to our edge. Good. We've got our two flaps. We've got our two main body pieces. Let's do this. I'm going to reset here. Let's add some glue. With our suede, technically we've got a flesh side on both sides but it's relatively easy enough to see which is our cleaner side. So let's lay that up. That's our face. Same with our flaps. Now with these, all we're gonna do is glue these on the edges, both sides, and then we'll glue this together. Easy enough. One point though, we're using our natural edge, our torn edge here. Make this your own. You could go with dags or scalloped or more torn or very clean, up to you. So let's do this. Let's flip our flaps over. And I'm simply going to add a small bead of glue on the outside edges of both pieces. But I don't want to go too heavy with my glue. We're using a leather craft cement. And this is a fantastic glue. Really works well on suede. So let's just get a nice bead because all we're doing here, we're simply gluing to sew. Tacking to sew. That's all we're doing. Let's get some of our glue off our finger. Same thing on the other pieces. 
Okay, glue on both sides again, tack to sew, so we don't need total coverage here. We just need this glue to hold until we get our chisel line in, and it will have no trouble with that. So let's lay that in, get a little glue off my finger. Same thing on this side. Press those down. Now, we need to give that glue really just about five minutes. So let's give that five, let that set. All right, giving that some good time. Again, great glue, gonna have no trouble here. Let's do this. We're gonna add a bead of glue on three of the sides, everything but the throat of the pouch. All right, there's our glue. And again, we don't want too much glue because when we reverse this, we'll see it, but that should not be an issue. Let's lay these down face to face. Let's press that down. That looks good. Very good hold. So let's give that about five minutes, five minutes to set. Then we're gonna jump over, drop in our lace holes and our chisel line. Couple of points here first off. We're gonna use an eighth inch flat chisel. I love this, it's my favorite chisel. But if we jump down to say a three to four ounce or a two to three, we need to back down to maybe one of the smaller diamond holes so therefore we get more stitches per inch. Suede, it's gonna work nicely here. Now, we're gonna sew three sides. With my six, what I'm going to do, I typically come in an eighth of an inch. Let's come in a little bit further because we've got four pieces of suede here. I wanna make sure if I'm not perfectly straight here that I don't come out of the edge. So drop this in, 3 sixteenths, give or take from our edge, and about an eighth of an inch to my first side. Now, again, we've got four pieces here. There we go, tying all the way across. So again, there we are. That's a little hard. Be easier once we get down to two ply. First time, last hole, and let's just work our way around the three sides, everything but our throat. And my last chisel, again, a little bit tough going through all four, but we can do it. And again, much easier down here, isn't it? Going through our two ply. Okay, so we've got our chisel holes. We look good all the way around. Let's go over to our throat. Now we can absolutely jump back to pattern on this, but for me, I typically just eyeball this because we want one hole, maybe three quarters inch in and maybe half of an inch down. Let's do that on both sides. And then let's just split the difference with two more holes. Last hole, okay. Again, if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. We'll never see that. This is simply going to cinch for us. Okay, let's step over and hand sew this. For our pouch, we're gonna go with a simple saddler stitch. We've got a whole video on this, so let's just touch on the high points. First off, our John James needles, my favorite needle and my favorite size, and Ritz the Tiger Thread. Now I'm gonna cut this about four, maybe five times my length because right here we've got four ply. We're actually going further horizontal than we are lengthwise, so we need to have ample thread. As always, one needle, first hole, let's draw that through, equal out our length. Second hole, I'm gonna lead with my right, open that up, cross over, make an X, grab the other end of the needle. So this gets a little bit easier as we get down to our two ply. But right here, we're used to adding good tension if we've been sewing with, the, with a veg tan. So what we wanna do is let's add good tension here. But when we get down here, we need to change that up a little bit. Now we're coming down to our transition from our four down to our two ply. So what we need to do now is we're so used to adding our tension. Let me find that hole. There we are. We're so used to adding our tension going out. But what's going to happen now is if we do that coming down through here, that's going to ripple on us. So the easiest thing to do is get another thread through there, another stitch. I'm going to pull horizontal. But after I get three or four stitches in, what I want to do is take my thread and I'm going to pull that long. That'll keep that from rippling on me. All right, let's finish out the bottom and the other side. And we're coming down to our end. Now, typically, I would split this. I would come through one side, same with the other, so we can hide our knot. 
but we're reversing this. So therefore that knot would be exposed. So let's go through our end. And then let's come back one hole, come back through and we're just going to tie a simple little square knot right here. That'll be tucked down the, in the throat of the pouch. That will be no issue. So right over left, circle around, tighten, left over right, circle around, tighten. Very good. Now let's do this. Let's take each end. I'm going to go back through one of the holes to my front side, technically inside, but you'll see where I'm going with this. Let's go through the other hole on the other side of that knot. Okay. Now let's trim these off. So those little tails, we could glue those in, super glue or white glue, but I just want to tuck those down. And I'm just going to cut over very easily. All right, that looks good. Perfect, no, but we don't need it to be perfect. Let's step over here, hammer down our stitch line, lace it, and we are done with this pouch. Now, in all honesty, I cannot tell you if this helps to hammer this particular stitch down. On veg tan, we hammer it down, so we close our holes, sinks that thread into our groove line, makes everything very clean and very consistent. Doesn't matter here, but nonetheless, let's don't stray from protocol. So let's hammer our stitch line down. Good, okay, let's reverse this. Now, it's gonna be a little bit tougher to do. A lighter weight leather, no issue, or a larger pouch but we've got a little bit of help. So let's push this through, reverse it. Now, this is tough to get through. This is a little heavy, seven by seven pouch, not so bad, or maybe a more supple leather. So all manner of uses in our shop for dowels. Here's a new application. So I'm gonna take this and just use the dowel to force that out. And we're gonna force our, our corners out as well Okay, well that looks good. Very cool, easy pouch. Let's step over here and add our lace and we're done. We can go two ways with our closure here. Actually, there's all kinds of ways we could do this, but let's start right here. One piece of lace and it's gonna close on the front. So I've got a piece of lace here about 28, maybe 30 inches long. You can cut lace straight from the leather that we cut the pouch face or the flap from, or we have all kinds of colors pre-spool. With that, we're going to start on our face, either side, spread that out a little bit. Now I've got four holes across here, two on the outside, two on the inside. So either inside hole, let's come in from the front and let's make sure we go through both pieces of leather. Okay, let's pull a good bit through, maybe about two thirds. Next move, we're going to go from there to the hole that's closest to the seam and we're going to come from the inside out. All right, let's go around our seam and on the hole closest to the seam, we're going to go from the outside in. All right, let's continue that all the way back around, but that's going to assure us that this lace will be coming out of this hole so we can tie this. And back out on one of our front holes. There we go. Okay, so let's pull that a little taut on both sides. And now we have our cinch. Let's pull that good and tight. Very cool. Well, that's a good looking pouch. We can loop that or not that, and we can add as much lace as we want to. Okay, let's do it a second way. Now, the way we're going to do this, we're going to need two pieces of lace about the same distance. So let's start right here, right on our seam on either side. I'm going to come from the outside to the inside, and I'm going to pull that again about two thirds. Let's go to our next hole, and I'm going to go out from the inside, find that hole, there we go, and I'm just going to repeat that all the way back around. Instead of our two points coming out here, they're going to come out over here. Okay, we're coming through that side, so really not much of a change. We've just moved this around over the seam. Let's take our second piece and we're going to reverse that. So over here, we're actually going to start on the outside of that. It's going to be a little bit tougher to get that lace through there, but we're going to do the same thing in reverse. 
So our two ends come out of the opposite side. And coming out of our last hole, nice, a little bit harder to do, but now we can draw on both sides and that will cinch up nicely. If we're tying this to our belt, got a little more security, a little more strength there. But overall, what a great looking pouch. Very period, but also with our lacing here. A little bit long, I'm gonna trim this off, but we could always add beads or knots or feathers, all manner of cool things we can do with this pouch to make that absolutely ours. What a great project, a lot of fun, very little skill required, but all kinds of ways we can make this our own. Great for gifts, great for the period costume folks, that will cover just about any era. I hope you've had a great time making a pouch with me, because I certainly have, and that is very cool. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.